as well. And lights are on. Hello. Um, today we are working on hand sewing up the back as well as the armpit holes. Um, yeah, just a lot of hand sewing. I am doing a ladder stitch and then I am going back through and doing a ladder stitch on the opposite spaces, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm staggering my stitches on the way back down. So uh, if you have questions about anything relating this project or, I don't know, projects that you're working on, feel free to ask them. I'm just working away. I did think I was going to be further along, but I took the weekend off and hung out with some family. So now I'm behind. Life still on us. So you really won't be able to see what I'm doing. You'll just have to take my word for it. Uh, there's no way, unless I put a GoPro on my head, that you would see this, and then you would get nauseous by me moving my head all around. Um, so I figured I would just zoom in. And my ladder stitches are about an eighth of an inch. So if you're wondering how wide I'm making my stitch, stitch lengths, they're about an eighth of an inch. So I'm just working my way up, and then I'll work my way back down. For this side, I've already um, hand sewed this bottom piece and then up to here. As I go, I'm taking the pins out that I don't need. making sure that each thread gets pulled through all the way and if it doesn't we figure out why I might need to stand up for some of this it's just very tedious so I know that some of you want to see exactly what I'm doing. Um, it's an eighth of an inch ladder stitch going up the seam. You'll be able to see when I do the back half how I started it from inside um, the lining and worked its way out. I didn't want to have to worry about mas machine stitching these and the fabric like pinching up in certain areas or pursing is what I wanted to use the term for it. Um, so this was the easiest and cleanest way for me to get the look that I wanted guaranteed. So I'm just doing a quarter, or an eighth of an inch ladder stitch, connecting the lining um, to the exterior of the dress. And then I'm gonna, once I get to the end up here, I'm gonna go right back. So here, we'll tilt the camera up a bit. Hi. Um, while I'm standing and doing this. So if you have questions on your own cosplays that you're working on, or outfits, dresses that you're working on, um, feel free to ask. I've got all the time in the world to assist in problem solving. So as I go, um, I'm taking out a pin, one, so I don't stick myself with it, uh, two, I don't need it anymore. I'm making sure only to enter and exit the fabric through that edge seam. I don't want to venture into the dress. Um, it's not going to give you a clean finish. And as much as you want to pull the string really taut, you got to keep in mind too that you're going to then be gathering all the fabric that you've just stitched. So it's important that when you pull it taut that you also smooth things out. And what I've been doing to kind of keep myself in check is I've been taking my wonder clips and just putting my wonder clips to assist with the stretching out and the not condensing of my material. Um, I'm going to move the chair out the way so there's a fan behind me, there's a nice breeze. Ugh. 
And the smaller my ladder stitch, too, the cleaner it will look on the return. This part isn't as exciting. Um, it's almost like sanding. It's not exciting to watch somebody sand prop pieces. I'm making sure that my stitch marks um, are across from each other. That way it's a smooth and even merging. So what I do is I push and hold my seams together, I travel across the path, and come up. As I work on this, I'm also uh, thinking about my next cosplay build. The con season for 2018 is coming to a quick end. So I am looking forward right now to 2019. Um, we are currently working on filling up our schedule with fun conventions to go to, uh, competitions to enter. We will be venturing outside of the state of Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, and then Canada since that's our usual stomping ground. We're going to try to visit Chicago this year. Uh, we might even make it to Boston if our schedule allows it. If there's a convention that you would like us to attend, uh, drop me a DM or send your convention a memo on behalf. Um, who knows, maybe we could guest there. We do bring fun fun things for people to purchase in new costumes. So as I get to the end here, um, I'm going to put a couple more clips, but I'm also then going to start pulling taut on my thread and making sure that this doesn't bunch up at all. So like as I pull on this, you can see like I can have the fabric completely bunch up. I don't want that. I want it to be smooth because if there's bunching, what will happen is if this stretches, it'll snap my thread and I don't want this. I want this to be at its stretched out extreme for silk. Now I'm going to feed my thread back through. So I'm going to do a ladder stitch now going through the opposite direction I just came and then staggering my uh, stitches in between the stitches that I've already done, if that makes sense. And I went to McDonald's and got a really, really, really large unsweetened iced tea. Yeah, where are you? Come here. Here's Stitch. He's here to hang out too, he says. You can lay down. No one's going to hate it if you lay down. I actually think half of them like you more than me. Come on, lay down. We live in the city, so that's why Stitch wears a collar with his tags on it. He is chipped. Um, worst case scenario. His collar can slide off his head, too. So for those of you that are thinking, like, oh, cat's wearing collars. What if he gets stuck? Um, he'll be able to get himself out. You can lay down. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just don't step on the keyboard. Here, we'll put little buffers. And put plastic lids over my keyboards because somebody is notorious for sending out messages. That's my iced tea.
we do have construction going on next door so if they I'm not sure if they're at lunch right now um, if they start up and it gets too noisy I'll just turn off the stream and uh, we'll do like an Instagram live or something So once I have this sewn, I'm going to then take an iron to it and press it. But you always want your seams to look finished too. So let's just switch the clips as we go. Just sitting right next to the camera, just taking a nice grooming in. You just cleaning yourself, buddy? Faith got so dirty by eating some lunch. So I'm just carefully going, grabbing an eighth of an inch, and I'm coming back out. Be careful around these um, curves. So the lining has already been sewn into the actual dress itself. The skirt for the lining is all done as well. I'm trying not to take forever with these steps, but it's important. Uh oh, where's the fan? Ah, oh, sorry, I was just broaching the fan so it tossed my hair maybe. It's warm, Stitch.
get litter all over the table. Show me your walrus whiskers. I'd love your helm stitch. Hmm? What are you doing? Hey, please don't chew on that. This that connects us to the internet. Let's leave that alone. We need that. Yeah, what's this over here? There's a mouse on the other side of the table from Stitch right now. They've all got their faces completely chewed off. Um, yes, these are the mice from Ikea. <coughs> Is this what you want? Hmm? Okay, play with the mouse. Just don't eat the cords. <laughs> Sometimes it's cute watching him because he'll throw the mouse up in the air and attack it himself. So now to tie this off, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use the back end of the pin to find one of the ladder stitches I've already done from my previous paths. And then I'm going to do a knot on top of that and then feed my thread back into the garment. And out of sight. Then I snip close to the fabric and voila, one side's done. Let's just stick that right there. So I'm just going to evenly spread it out. There. Voila. It's clean. And I'm pulling out a thread for some reason. All right, now time to do the other side, and I'll be able to turn the mannequin a little bit towards you. So again, using Guterman thread, it's my way of life. I don't use any other thread brands. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but. Why fix something if it's not broken? Uh oh, except for I dropped my bobbin on the floor. I wonder. <laughs> Just toss that there for now. I just drew a slip knot on the end of mine. And then try to pull my knot as close to the end as possible. However, I hate having to redo the slip knot, so I'd rather 
do them far enough down and then just trim off the tail. Now, to start my ladder stitch, I'm gonna start by doing this bottom piece first. One, because there's a lot of weight on it, as is, and I want this to be supported. But I'm gonna start from back inside for two reasons. One, to strengthen the stitch that I've had to take apart and is now doesn't have a reverse, um, like when you use the sewing machine, how you reverse back, that way you are doubling back over your stitches to make sure they don't pop or separate. I have torn and ripped out some of the threads and stitches, that way the fabric aligns perfectly. Uh, all of the measurements from here to here and here to here and here and all the seams, they're all even. They're all even. Um, so I'm going to start back in here, do my ladder stitch up, connect it to the front then through that way, then come all the way to the end, and then go on back, and then go up, and then come back down, and then we'll be done with the back again. <laughs> so I'm going to start by taking my my stitch into the seam making sure that the knot and everything holds and now I'm going to weave it through a quarter of an inch, or not a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch still, back and forth across the seam that doesn't need any stitching. I'm reinforcing, and then by doing this, I'm going to create an extra firm um, and secure stitch across like the seam gap of this corner. I'm not really sure exactly how to phrase this for you guys. Um, if I were to just start there and tie my knot off in that direction, what I would deal with is the possibility of there being pressure, or not pressure, but tension, and that breaking the knot or pulling the knot through my fabric. By starting it far inside my garment, I'm not going to have that resistance or that tension being pulled. I'm just using an eighth of an inch ladder stitch. Sometimes you might be able to maneuver between one seam end and the other without having to pull your string out. Now I'm at that, that seam that we were talking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the fabric. Oop. breaking through on the other side and grabbing that seam with a ladder stitch. There are a couple extra threads um, from when I had to modify. I'm going to snip them now instead of later. Just so I know, one, what's real, and two, what's just there to confuse me. Now I'm going to do a ladder stitch coming down the back piece. Don't want the dress to come off the mannequin. Uh, let's be proactive instead of reactive then with that. And put a clip at the top. All right, hopefully that'll help prevent it from falling off. It's hard to see the red on red. If you have questions, just let me know. I'm just doing an eighth of an inch ladder stitch back and forth.
making sure to pull it taut each time, but not enough where it's going to pucker the fabric. We want to give the simulation that this was sewn on a machine, not by hand. So you'll notice uh, down below that we have changed our twitch schedule for the week. Um, it's very selfish of why I changed it. I wanted Tuesdays to watch all of the uh, anime I desired. Uh, because if you've watched my twitch streams before on a Tuesday, you know that I watch Overlord and Black Clover. Um, but then also Lupin is out too. so. Instead of having to wait to stream or having to quickly rush to get things ready to stream, we are moving and trying Wednesdays and Thursdays. So we're still keeping Thursdays, but we're going to try to do them back to back. Also, it might help with uh, keeping the cameras and lights in their current position. I don't have to feel like I got to move them around because I got to do work on Wednesday. So streaming back to back could hopefully is easier. So I'm literally eighth of an inch ladder stitching back and forth, pulling out pins. I'm going to start putting these clips again to help uh, keep everything at the stretched out length it's supposed to be. I'm going to stop right before I get to where I'm going to be putting in a, um, a zipper. I've already marked and measured off where the zipper is going to go. So now I'm just going to turn it around and start heading back in the opposite direction. ladder stitching back up, pulling it taut but not taut enough that it buckles some of the fabric. We don't want that. They also call the ladder stitch an invisible stitch, depending on who you're talking to.
I'm just ladder stitching. You can see the ties that I made hanging behind me. They were made from the same dress material. That way nobody has to worry about going and finding ties that match. That's taken care of. I picked up some custom gifts today. So now I've got a double ladder stitch going on. I'm going to take this up past the bend of my back and actually start going into this curve. I, I did the same thing with the other side and hid my knot somewhere in here. Um, so I'm, I'm imagining that I'm going to be doing the exact same thing to the other side and it made it really easy to attach another piece of thread to it that way. Let's just keep going. I'm going to go through and out the front again and then ladder stitch up if it goes through. So I got a knot in my thread, and now that small knot isn't wanting to go through the multiple layers, which is going to end up breaking, just like it did there. Well, if that's the case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a uh, uh, tie knot and then use the next adjoining thread to tuck this away. So I'll just tie a real close knot to the end, snip off the tail, and we'll fix this. So I was able to pull that small knot through two ply, but it won't go through four ply, which makes sense. I'm going to throw this mouse up to stitch. <laughs> I made it on the second tier of the cat tree. My nails are growing out and becoming a little unmanageable. Don't worry, that's what the nail appointment next week's for. So I'm going to just slip my thread onto the knot that's already there. 
we're gonna hide it. And do it all over again. No one's going to know. Ha ha, hee hee, ho like I need to there we go See, so you guys are hearing that noise. Um, I'm almost positive since I'm hearing it and can hear it two rooms away. Um, if it continues, I will have to stop the stream. Um, it's really nice of my landlord to let me know this was going to be going on. There was sarcasm in that. Lots of sarcasm. I sent her a text too. But apparently uh, people don't have their phones on them, which I know is a lie, um, and her unprofessionalism to get back to me in regards to when they are going to be take care of it. Uh, hey, Nick. Uh, yeah, so we lost the neighbors, and they destroyed their place, and so now they, I'm guessing, are reven renovating it to rent it out. But um, when asked four times that they would be in, since I do craft out of my living room, I've been reached with nothing. But then again, I've also been waiting on a contract she was supposed to bring over to do design. So, yeah. <sighs> Guess I just think people should conduct themselves professionally. Silly me. Uh, we'll see if it gets louder or persists. In the meantime, I'm going to just keep doing the ladder stitch going up the back. So I wish you could see this, but because we did the ladder stitch through the fabric and pulled our extra knot into the back, um, you can't even see that we did the added um, stitching and thread apl application, if you will. I would think so with those neighbors. It's not that bad. Okay, as long as it's not, because it sounds horrible, the knocking on this end. So as long as it's not driving you guys crazy, we'll, we'll roll with it. So I'm doing an eighth of an inch ladder stitch going up. Nick, missed seeing you uh, last weekend. We made an impromptu trip up north to get the brakes fixed on the Jolly Green Giant. Um, I was told that I drive the vehicle like a 72-year-old man. Or at least that's what the wear and tear on it shows. I'm very proud of myself. What's even funnier is that the hammering is so loud through the steel case cabinets full of supplies that I have as well. Um, again, I just think it's common courtesy to tell somebody when there's going to be loud construction being done on your place or a place next door. But That's better than Trevor at 16. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I've got fantastic news I can share with you and with everybody else as well. 
Disfusional Studios is going legit. And when I say legit, I mean we are going to be in business. Which then also means that there's more fun things to file for taxes. So for 2019, we will, uh, we were founded in 2009, established in 2019. That's not too bad. Ten year gap in between? Figuring oneself out? Yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. We are hoping to actually create product to be sold at conventions coming up next year. Uh, we are looking to go to a bigger convention um, that is not located in Michigan, Ohio, or Canada. And when I say Canada, I mean the Windsor, Canada area because it's maybe a half hour to cross the border and get there. The current goal, by, and I guess by saying this out loud to people who can view this video over and over again, I am actually now have to follow and back it up. We are hoping to get our, our shit together. There's no clean way of saying that. Our shit together so that we can compete in C2E2's cosplay championships. So I know it's saying a lot. Um, so we are currently working on the easiest way to compile um, progress logs for our next project. Uh, that way uh, you can submit all of that. Need to get you out to BlizzCon Emerald City. Yes. Um, I do know, though, that Emerald City Comic Con's cosplay contest, the winner goes to C2E2 to compete at their cosplay contest. So that could be kind of a, a killing two birds with one stone if I just go to the C2E2 one. Um, BlizzCon, though, would be wonderful. We are tentatively planning to do Magda from D3 for C2E2. Uh, we will, as of right now, we'll have lights, but we won't have the servo motors in the wings of her shoulders. If all goes well, maybe BlizzCon can be a possibility um, for later on in the year, and then with servo motors for the moth's wings. I don't know. I'm, I'm still game planning it out, but I do know that Magda from D3 is going to be my next big build, and I'm very, very excited to continue working on it, because I have already the 80 moths uh, embroidered and ready to be fold and steamed from when I started doing her a couple, a few months ago. I think it was back at the end of last year. She's sort of taken a Mad Moxie approach to creation where I start her, then put her away in a box, and then take her out months later. Mad Moxie turned out pretty well, so maybe maybe that's some, some positive thoughts for Magda then. That's the game plan. BlizzCon, though. That's a huge one. I feel like I need to do um, some baby steps to go from one of these Michigan ones. Now that sounded like it was coming from the museum. I need to do uh, some transition from the small Michigan conventions to like a BlizzCon. There needs to be like some middle stepping ground before it goes, oh, this is small too. Oh my goodness, look at everybody. Uh, yes, busy, but have I been busy with the correct things? And so that's what we sat down with over Labor Day weekend. So when some people were uh, figuring out how to relax and the day away, I was trying to figure out how to marketing and business strategy wise take Disfusional Studios to its next level. Um, and the only way to do that is to create cosplay and costumes that are not of quantity but of quality uh, and not try to push out as many as I have been. And so I've been trying to fit in smaller conventions and doing smaller cosplays here and there when really uh, next year we're going to be planning maybe half as many conventions and then two grandiose cosplays. I'm hoping that summer of next year I'll have butt wings. <laughs> um, so I'm always open to, to evil character ideas. Some, some villains. I'm not going to lie, Nick. 
Gang Orca definitely caught my eye. He just seems so badass. But the whole not being an actual villain and just being a villain for 22 minutes, I'm not, I'm not sure if I can shed my alliance to the, the villain league. Um, okay, so we, are, we don't have Crunchyroll Premium. Um, so we are a week behind. So we just watched the OVA that they had that kind of gave us some backstory. And then we get the Gang Orca. So I know that Gang Orca busts through the wall with his entourage, but I don't know exactly what happens to Gang Orca. Or, like, I mean, I did read ahead in the manga, so I kind of know, but <laughs> you never know how they, they're going to take it in the anime. If they're going to cut things out, because I know with Overlord, they've, they've cut and chopped and, yeah, don't spoil anything, and, and uh, modified it, so we didn't get all of the details that the manga have. Have you started watching Overlord yet? Okay, wonderful. We, uh, I love Tuesdays because it's Black Clover and Overlord Day, and that's why we pushed the stream. So I'm streaming Wednesday and Thursday, so Tuesdays, uh, anime days. Oh, very nice. I've recommended the Made in Abyss anime to a couple friends and everybody that's watched it has told me that they love it but they were saddened when Mitty died. And if you haven't seen it yet and I just spoiled that Mitty died, don't worry, it's not that big of a um, of a spoiler. Okay, no action. Because I know that we just watched Ein Zau Ghul, um, Ein Sama! We just watched Ein Sama, um, completely own face with the adventure, or not the adventurers, what are they, are they mercenaries? Uh, that, that entered his tomb. And What's Her Nuts got new vocals, I love that, Entima got new vocals. But then it cut, the, the end of that episode ended with the two sisters sitting there talking about when their older sister was going to show up. And that's exactly how that chapter in the book ends as well. And you're like, oh, because at the same time you're rooting for Shell Chair to completely destroy that poor little girl. And so you're cheering for the bad guys. I love it. <laughs> And they all thought that uh, Momonga was going to come and save them. <laughs> it's the same guy. <laughs> so I'm repositioning these straight pins. Uh, the reason being is they are acting as a way to keep the fabric smooth um, and you can kind of see them poking all over the place and that's just to keep the fabric smooth as I'm folding it over um, so that one side doesn't end up longer than the other and again create bunching and unevenness and ugly grossness so. Kiyoshi you're wondering why I have straight pins all over this garment no Ainz is definitely not a good guy he literally just takes that one guy's face in his hand paralysis and then as the guy falls to the ground goes maybe that was too much <laughs> and what's her nuts can see somebody's magical abilities and tells them ah uh, he doesn't he's not a magic caster at all 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 Ainz does is remove his ring and then she starts just projectile vomiting on the floor because of the intensity of the magic that he has oh there's just I love Tuesdays. Love Tuesdays. And Black Clover was a good one, too, even though I only saw 12 minutes of new content because they kept playing repeats. Oh, 
but oh yeah sugoi sugoi Okay, well, I mean, I'm, I, I imagine that they would keep going. Everybody's loving it. I've got my black clover robe. You can kind of see it in the corner over there um, because somebody really likes to fangirl out when they watch their episodes. Uh, I mean, it's, it's got a lot of action, and they might be able to get away with doing 50-some more episodes because, again, yesterday's episode, I think we only got 12 minutes of new content. Which is, again, is a, is a bummer. I get it. It's given us the same Dragon Ball Z issues, you know, same fight for a whole entire season. But at the same time, I just wish they were longer. How come anime can't be an hour long? Is that all that animation really hard to come up with? <laughs> don't want to ruin the next episode of Boat Life, but watch through the credits until you see who flips that. Oh, we, we always watch to the end, um, and sometimes we'll fast forward to the end, because in uh, Black Clover it's Petite Clover! Um, and then, you know, the Pleiades cartoons that happen at the end. So, so we do watch all the way through. That is without a question something we do. And we actually took to I don't know if it's KISS anime, where you can watch all the plea plea pleadies. Because they're still coming out with more plea plea pleadies with every episode as well. I'm trying to figure out how to put Albedo into a masquerade. Um, because if I was to do an Albedo cosplay, um, she's, she's definitely a character that could potentially have some fun masquerade qualities. I know that it would, it would have to be uh, a body pillow, uh, an Einzagul body pillow. We'd have to have his tabard and flag that I'm making to hang above my bed <laughs> um, as a tabard to be carried. I don't know. I'm just really looking forward to it. I like Tuesdays and I like Saturdays. Saturdays when I get to watch new episodes of Boku no Hero Academia. Tuesdays and Saturdays. Best days out of the week. So we're getting to the end of our string, so I'll end up tying it back in there. Okay, to dress T up as Eins would be probably fairly, when I say probably, I mean very uncomfortable. We've already talked about this. There had to be a backpack and PVC harness to really get him up to the height that he would need to be for an Eins. Uh, so I'm thinking he might be more of a Demiurge type of gentleman. And then that way too I can also have him on stage for the um, a masquerade kind of just playing into Elbedo's Einsama uh, obsession, if you will. He could, he could maybe hold the body pillow as she practices spearing it onto the, to the bed or something. I don't know. She's so cool. <laughs> I asked uh, Camtron if he would be down for uh, being the person behind the backdrop uh, throwing small skull stuffed animals at me and he said he would so 
This might turn into a family family event there, Nick. We can make you the invisible pleadies that just carries things around that nobody nobody even knows about. Like I don't think people know that that staff of Einzel Ghoul has a pleadies that is always there just to protect it and she's invisible. You could you could gender bend as the invisible person that nobody even sees. <laughs> Cameron I thought would just like to throw things. <laughs> I don't know. Again, just just spitballing ideas. Every single time I watch a new anime or a new episode, I get all these ideas. There's never enough time in the day to do them all. I'm quickly filling up October with photo shoots galore. Alright. He does like to throw stuff. Huh? Alright. So now the next step, now that we've got the back all stitched up and ready for a zipper, we're going to do the sleeves. Um, here's the front and the bodice. I'm going, I've clipped them already. I've got the pins going all the way around. I've actually marked the measurements from the collar seam to the edge. We're doing four inches from the bust dart to the hole. We're doing oh, four and a half for the shoulder, two inches going up. I'm going to fold the edges in and then I'm going to hand stitch it again. Um, I just, I want this to be as clean as possible and I don't want stitches to be visible. I don't want there to be a top stitch. I don't. Uh, I think for something like this, it would be very tacky. Oh, it looks like we've got network error. Uh, huh. Nick, can you still see us? I wonder what's going on. We're going to stop the stream and start it back up. Because it says that we're live, but for me, I've got a network error showing across it. Let's just see what happens. If I refresh the page. Because I've got it hooked up straight into our Wi-Fi connection. So unless the dingbats next door and their construction cut a line to the building, which nothing surprises me these days. We should be ready to rock and roll. Still says we're live. Let's see if it shows network error. Hmm. Because I've got still streaming. Oh, I do have a red dot saying that it's not happy. Network error. I've got three viewers, but it's saying for me that there's a 2,000 network error. If you guys can still see me and, and hear me and we're good there, that works. Uh, if you can't, let me know and we will stop and start again. I got no clue. Hmm. We're gonna we're gonna start and restart. Maybe my stream knows that I usually like to uh, Twitch stream for an hour and then have a snack break. Uh, so we're gonna stop the Twitch and then we'll start it back up. So I'll see you in a couple seconds.